To date, we're breaking out that S17 again. And guess what? We're going to put a new firmware on it. Why do we want to do that? Because we do. We tested it with a couple of other firmwares so far, and we've got at least two more left to go. So let's jump into this already. And back to the spreadsheets. This is the spreadsheet that we've worked on a couple of times now, comparing five different pools with stock firmware to those same five different pools, for the most part, with the Hive OS firmware. Now, I want to try Brains OS. Heard some good things about it. I've heard some bad things about it. I would be interested to see what we come up with here. Um, a couple of things that I think we're going to, you know what, we're not going to change that because we're using a Brains OS. We're going to go on the Brains pool. I was going to say, let's take out that Brains pool because the last two times that we've used it, we got absolutely zero payout. But we're using their OS within their pool. Let's give it a try. Why not? How do we do this already? Let's look at a little bit more information about Brains itself. Brains OS Plus has an auto-tuning mining firmware. Increase hash rate on your Bitcoin to ASICs, improve efficiency is up much as 25% and mine on any pool or get 0% pool fees on the Brains pool. I guess that means over here, we can take we can take all these, paste them here. That's not what I wanted to do. So it says 0% pool fee on Brains pool. So it looks like here, we can just make that a zero. Uh, supported models, all the S19s and T19s, S19 XP, and the S17 series and the T17s, um, as well as the S9s. So we have an S17 plus. Started life as a T17 plus. Uh, increase hash rate on your 19 models. Reduce power consumption and maximize efficiency. Joule per terawatt. Yeah, two and a half percent dev fee. Wait, wait, what? 2.5. What the hell? Here we go. Google Docs, Google Sheets. Fucking suck, man. Give me back my Excel. All right, so how do we go about doing this? So this second link that we found, by the way, I found all this just by Googling Brains OS S17, that's with two eyes. What I'm reading here for the 17 models is we can install directly on NAND flash, flashing the firmware directly onto the machine, or, and this is what we're actually gonna do, we're gonna run Brains from the SD card. That way, we've already got Hive on there. We know Hive works. I don't have to overwrite what I know works, and we can continue with our, our video here. I'm gonna hit download, and it's gonna go to Google Drive. There's two options here. One is run from SD, and one is the NAND install. Um, of course, we want the run from SD, download anyway. We'll put it right there. I don't know if you need to burn it or if you can just copy and paste. Let's see. Okay, so we do need to flash it with like Etcher or Rufus or something. That's fine. Next thing we'll need to do is go ahead and get our SD card plugged into the machine. We'll go ahead and open Rufus. You could do it with Etcher if you want, I'm sure. Uh, you have eight gig, select the ISO, and we'll just go ahead and hit start, I guess. So writing image, probably won't take very long. Two hours later. So it says next steps are to insert the SD card into the miner. The miner can be powered on while doing this. Interesting. So after installing the SD card, power up or reboot the miner, the miner will automatically boot Brains OS from the SD card. The internal memory is kept intact and Brains OS does not alter in any way. So fuck yeah, let's do it. I'll grab my phone. You'll come with me. We'll go out there and I'll power off the machine. We'll plug this bad boy in, get it powered back on, and then we'll come inside and we'll find the IP address and go from there. Uh. And here we are going out to the shed again. Oh man, you can hear that bad boy screaming. Definitely warmer in here already. 84 degrees, 80 degrees. That's all turned off though. All of this is turned off right now. So actually this is the only thing that's on. And this of course. So we're gonna power that off. Take our SD card. Carefully put it into our SD slot. Careful if you get that off center, it'll just go right past the SD reader and slide into the box and then you gotta hey, take the whole top off to get to it again. Anyway, we'll power it back on. There we go. That was weird. All right. And it's taking off. Now, let's go inside and find the IP address. 
plug the SD card into the Magic China box. Now we need just angry IP scanner and we can scan our network. There it is. Oh, this is to log into the box. Got it. So the password to log into the local box is root root. Well, it's hashing at 11 giga hash, but I haven't done anything with it yet. I don't know why it would be doing this. Oh, because it has a default. Let's go in and change the pool. Non-existent user, non-existent user. That's funny. Yeah, so I've never used this one before yet. Under pools, I don't have add new pool. I had to scroll down. I'm retarded. What are we going to start with? We're going to start with nice hash. One million zillion jillion dillion cotillion times later. All right, so we concluded our uh, firmware test here uh, across the different pools and had a couple of snags that we hit along the way. If you're following me at all, you see that earlier this week, I had errors come up and one of the hash boards completely stopped hashing on the S17. I thought it was broken because I'm used to it being broken, I guess. Come to find out, it seems like Brains, when it's doing some of its auto-tuning, that might be part of the process. I mean, I'm not watching it extensively, but I check in on it from time to time. For example here, this hash board number three went to zero terahash, zero power, it completely blanked out. And that happened before, you know, the hash board went, was bad and didn't recognize the ASICs chips or whatever, but I turned it off, left it off for a couple of hours, turned it back on and repointed it to the same pool I was working on. And it's been on ever since. All, that, all the hash plates have been up and running ever since. So let's talk about our findings real quick. This is our master spreadsheet here. We're looking at our stock firmware. You know, Luxor Tech gave us the best yield here. Hive OS firmware. Uh, NiceHash gave us the best yield here. Now, this could also be timing because right now NiceHash is talk of the town you know, providing more than hash rate rental like they typically have. They've got their easy mining going on, the catch the block thing. There's there's lots of stuff going on over at Nice Hash. I guess just keep that in mind. On our Brains OS now, and again, I did this in a 12 hour cycle, and I actually tuned this to 1500 watts. We're getting less hash rate than we did in the previous two cycles, but we're also spending a lot less on power at the moment. So here we had this in low power mode on Hive at 1710 watts at 52 tera hash. And that's generally what we got here, um, you know, as far as what was done on in the firmware. Again, looking in the firmware here, we're tuned at 1500 watts and we get around 56 to 58 tera hash. So in nice hash, we got 4620 Satoshis in 12 hours. Brains uh, pool, none. Absolutely none. So this is the last time I'm going to use Brains Pool for any of my testing, especially in a 12-hour test, but just in general, any of my testing, I'm, I'm done with Brains as far as a pool. Moving on to Luxor Tech, this is where I had the hashboard failure at the time of running in this test. So I kind of stopped and started back over. I don't know if that impacted these results. It's, it's pretty far off. Maybe I'll have to redo this or when we do the next test, maybe we'll start with Luxor next time. But we got 3,747 Satoshis there. Trust pool, we got 5,792 Satoshis. And then the winner of this test, emcd.io, we got 5,903 Satoshis in a 12 hour period. Go ahead and make that green. To use Brains OS, they implement a 2.5% dev fee. Now, if you're on Brains Pool, there's there's no pool fee, but you still pay the dev fee. So the pool fee was 2%, but it would take it down to 0% plus a 2.5%. Luxor Tech had the highest overall fees with 2.5% pool, 2.5% dev, so a 5% fee up front just to use that pool with Brains OS. So that may be where it's such a low output here. You know what I mean? These are my results here using Brain OS on Nice hash, brains, Luxor Tech, Trust Pool, and EMCDIO, EIEIO, Bitcoin mining pools. What are your thoughts about this? I like the brains dashboard. I don't like the two and a half percent fee. If you have a large enough farm, maybe that wouldn't matter. I don't know, but for a single machine, 
it, it is nice being able to go in and see all of these details and really drill down to the configuration of the machine, of the performance. Something I really like, the auto tuning. So we could set a, a target power limit like I've done here, 1500 watts. I don't wanna spend over 1500 watts on this machine. Boom, I can set it there. Or we could do a hash rate target. So if I wanna balls out at 100 tera hash, I could put that in here. Now it says max of 124, that's a lot. I wonder how much power that's actually gonna pull. So it gives you a lot more detail and a lot more configuration settings that you can play with in an easy to read and understand GUI. That's, I think that's really important. I mean, even Hive OS is pretty nice, pretty detailed, but nothing like this. This is pretty freaking sweet. So if you made it this far in the video, hit that thumbs up if you learned something today. And let me know in the comments below what you think about Brains OS as a dedicated firmware on Bitmain ASIC miners. And what do you think about our little spreadsheet experiment we've got going on? Up next is ASIC.to. They've got their own firmware as well that we'll be installing and trying it out. So consider subscribing if this is the kind of video that you want to see. And of course, thanks for watching.